All right, I think I found a solution for the uh, fans. Uh, a lot of times that you've seen me use, it's those clip-on fans. All right, so what I have found here is a very small and very portable fan. This is the intake, and then it just sort of flips up like this, and then this is where the air comes out of. Very convenient. When I'm done with it, I can just flip it down and it turns into this tight and compact type of fan. Now the base on it, it can rotate, but it's got two speeds on it. Move the fan up just a little bit because I want most of the air to go down so it gets up underneath the console and it blows out. And actually the, this fan here is Velcroed into the uh, floor, the bottom of the cabinet. So I think this is going to work out real well. It's out of the way. Uh, I don't have to have to worry about those clip-on fans laying on top of the cables or anything. So I think this will work. I think we're going to give this a try. All right, and this fan is uh, pretty well hidden. All right, so this fan does fit in our large Presonus cases with a doghouse. This fan does not fit in our small Presonus, the 1642 case. So for that case, I'll just stick it on some uh, shock foam, uh, get the fan up high enough so the air can blow over the case and into the back of the console. All right, my plan is also to use these fans to keep the, the sub cool. Uh, air comes in down here at the vent and it exhausts as designed. Right up here at the top, this top fan up here. And what I may end up doing is uh, taking some Velcro. I'll probably cut out a small piece of a, like a plywood that's bigger than this base. Get some Velcro, attach this fan to the plywood, get a bit more stable. But I think this is going to work out real well. All right, so some time ago after uh, doing a show, a uh, monitor speaker uh, sounded like it was making some kind of a noise inside of it and then after checking it I found that the uh, horn uh, the screws around the horn needed to be tightened all right so what I need to check on is the other monitor speakers and I'll be checking the other non monitor speakers as well all right and it's actually uh, pretty easy uh, to see if you need to open your speakers up to check on the uh, drivers so this is how we're going to do it is we just need to put um, a little bit of a, of a knock on the cabinet and a lot of times uh, what I do is I'll tilt the cabinet up get it on, on one of its corners and I'm just going to just slightly tap it against the floor now I don't know if you can hear the bass that's in it but there's no rattling so by me doing this, I can tell none of the horns, none of the drivers are loose. So let's take a look at what a loose one should sound like. All right, that tells me that it's probably going to be the horn that's loose. So we need to pull off the front cover and make sure everything is tight. Now, for those of you who are thinking, you know, you, know, you shouldn't be banging your speakers on the ground. Well. If your speakers cannot sustain this type of a hit, you probably shouldn't be using those kinds of speakers out in the field. All right, let's get the let's get this speaker fixed. All right, as you can tell, these screws over here have worked their way out. I mean, this is, this is quite a bit. This was ready to, to pop out. Um, let's see, that's loose, this is loose. These others down here are okay, but um, eh. yeah, this is the worst one here. So anyway, uh, a lot of times vibrations, constant vibration, 
uh, these things can work themselves out. Anyway, it was about time for me to open this up and to check everything out. Uh, but I said I started thinking I was hearing uh, noises in the cabinet as I was moving it around, which is what led me to um, pop these covers off. And just because I have a uh, one of these power drivers does not mean that I need to use full torque on it. I'm only using this to drive them right down close to the surface and then I will hand tighten them uh, with a regular screwdriver. This ensures I don't strip anything. Hmm. This one's a problem. All right, this one is stripped. Let's take a look at this. All right, coarse thread. All right, we're gonna try uh, something else here. Our good old standby. There we go. All right, looks pretty good. I think these are gonna be okay here. Let's just check them over here. All right. Yeah, these are solid here. All right, all right. And we can do a real quick uh, test on this on the ground. All right, here we go. Pretty bassy, I don't hear any rattling. So I'm not too sure if you can hear the bass coming from it, but yeah, problem fixed. All right, this one is ready to go. So, got uh, just I got two other monitor speakers to check, but I'm also going to check the uh, the ones that we use to supplement the monitors, as well as uh, they're mostly used for the smaller front of house shows. All right, this is just a quick update on these uh, support things that I made for the uh, RCF the line array speakers. So, I mentioned I wasn't going to paint them black, but I did. Keep them a little bit more hidden. And also, and I don't think you can really tell or not, but um, up here, uh, this shock foam that I had in here before uh, was fairly uh, rigid. So, I have replaced that short piece of shock foam that was in here originally with uh, something that is a softer foam. Uh, not quite as dense, but it does run... Uh, most of the distance of the uh, cabinet. So it goes from about here all the way over to here. So it's got more surface area uh, to absorb the uh, weight of the cabinets. We're going to go with that. All right, so I think some of you have seen these uh, two befores uh, that we use to prop up the speakers, uh, like monitor speakers. And sometimes we put these uh, below the uh, subs to keep the subs off the ground. What we'll do is we'll stick a 2 before under the back of it. We'll set it down like that and it sort of changes the angle of it. And then on the short side of the sub here, we'll just stick these on the ground. We'll just take the sub and we'll put them on there. Uh, we usually use maybe two or three of these uh, per sub. Alright, we have one of our tubs. We keep a lot of the uh, lumber in. We have different sizes of things for different things that we may do. Uh, this has worked out great, but this box uh, is uh, can be fairly heavy. So on smooth surfaces, uh, like concrete floors, like what you see, like sometimes in halls, even in uh, sometimes a parking lot, asphalt parking lot specifically, uh, these things can slide around. And if you've got a sub sitting on here, the base 
uh, can cause the sub to slide around. In one of the shows that we did a few years ago, we had one of our uh, SRX 728 subs uh, basically slide off onto uh, one side, just slid right off the, the uh, uh, lumber. And it was due to the base frequencies vibrating on it, but also the parking lot was sort of sloped. So the sub was vibrating off the tuba fords in the direction that the parking lot was sloping to. It wasn't that big of a slope, but it was enough that the sub slid off the lumber. All right, so after that show, got me thinking, how can I stop that from happening? So I'm going to use an unpainted uh, tube before here so you can see what I'm going to do. I thought about getting stuff like this. Uh, this is rather uh, tacky. And the whole idea was to use this on the tube before, set the sub on top of it, and the sub won't slide around. But I also had the problem where on smooth surfaces, like in that particular parking lot, uh, the lumber would probably start sliding. So uh, to fight that, I was just going to get another piece. Now, obviously, the, I would be using bigger links. I was going to get another piece and put it uh, on the ground so that everything would sit together and not move. Now, this probably would have worked. I never tried it because I looked at it. This would have been a big management issue. So I did not go this route. What I decided to do after doing some testing was move to the shock foam. And so I decided to use this as a support for like the monitor speakers and for the subs. Uh, this foam is Crosslink Polyethylene. It is, not, it is not polyurethane. Polyurethane is like a sponge. It's a little too soft. But the polyethylene is a lot firmer. You can get it in different firmness levels and it's crossed with uh, rubber. All right, so um, for us, the density of the foam is very important. Uh, so for example, I think everybody's seeing these clamps like this. And I don't remember how much uh, pounds that is that's coming down on it. But um, if we were to squeeze this here, you can sort of see uh, how much that's being compressed by. Now, if we take a bigger piece of foam, this, this is about the same consistency, it's just a bigger piece. We sort of get the same thing, which is, which is what we want. Now this foam here looks identical, pretty much identical. It's all cross-linked polyethylene, but this foam is extremely dense. This would probably not be a good option. The reasoning why I'm saying that is when we put the foam on the ground, we want the foam to be soft enough that it can, under the weight, that it can grab the surface that it's on. And also, whatever the weight is that's coming down on the foam, we want the foam to be able to grab that weight. We don't want anything to move. And if the foam is too dense, uh, too solid, the potential for something actually sliding around is a lot greater than it would be if the foam is uh, softer. Right, so let's see what the two before's are like. But this is what I was talking about with the problem here. Is these things can still slide around. Now, it's not much and it's not really taking that much pressure for me to slide these around. They're all what is this? They're all, uh, let's say, 25 and a half inches. And they are this size. They could probably be 26 inches, actually. And I may, uh, I may try to fix that while I'm at it. But um, I wanted to keep the, the, the lengths equal enough and small enough that everything can be carried inside of this uh, container. Uh, the boards are actually shorter 
just slightly shorter than the uh, length of a monitor speaker. So I'm trying to keep stuff at a consistent size. It's two inch thick. This is the uh, cross length uh, polyethylene foam. And uh, this foam, the density I want to say is two pounds per cubic foot. It can handle eight pounds per square inch, which is actually a little bit more than what uh, the foam that I currently have. So this foam to work out is a great replacement uh, for these tube of fours. All right, this may do it for the uh, two before lengths, what I need. And uh, obviously, as you can tell, these things are not perfect, but they don't need to be. These are in a supportive roll. All right, so with the uh, foam sitting underneath there, see, this is the weight of this. I mean, this is not moving. There we go. It takes a lot more force to move this uh, than it did when it was sitting on the tube of fours. Yeah, this definitely takes more weight to move. Uh, than what it was when it was sitting on the wood. All right, and something else that uh, I was thinking about uh, to help my decision into in moving to stuff like this is that um, if we set up inside, let's say on a wood floor, a lot of times the uh, facilities don't want you to put speakers directly on the floor just because there's the potential of scraping. Uh, if the feet of the speakers are bad or they're coming off, we could put this on a wood floor and not have any issues with it uh, marring the floor. Some of you are wondering, why do we do this? Well, as I referenced before, if we do stuff inside on finished floors, we don't want to wreck up the floors. But also, if you're doing something outside and it rains, you could have either flowing water, let's say if you're doing something in a parking lot, you could have water coming down onto your speakers on the ground. Also, if the water's not flowing, the possibility of your speakers sitting in standing water. So if we're doing stuff outdoor shows and there's grass, and as the evening, nighttime comes on, then we have the potential problem of condensation occurring on the ground. We don't want to get the bottom of the speakers wet. Getting the speakers wet uh, on the bottom, normally that usually isn't a problem, but if you have uh, like metal feet that are used on the speakers, there could be rubberized feet that are attached with the metal screws. Over time, these screws and metal feet can rust. And for the parking lots, if you're setting your speakers directly down onto either the asphalt or the pavement, it's very possible that there could be either larger size rocks or maybe chunks of asphalt. These things can actually uh, tear away the surface of the bottom of the speakers. So that's just the reason why we put supports under the speakers. Not everybody probably has to or needs to or wants to do it, but that's just the reason why we do it.
Oh boy. It's like there's nothing in there. My goodness. Yeah, this is nice. And uh, this is a, a lot of times the reason why I usually don't bring this whole tub just because it weighs so much and it gets in the way. I mean, this, I mean, this is like nothing. Absolutely nothing. All right, just a quick summary of, of what I'm using here. And obviously, uh, there's a lot of variables involved with foam, with density, and how much you can be compressed by. This is just what we use. Uh, this, is, uh, this foam here, the depth is a little bit more than two inches. This one is one inch, a little bit more than one inch. It's all cross-length uh, polyethylene. And it has a, it can take eight pounds of pressure per square inch to uh, compress the foam by uh, 25%. Both of these are same. And I believe it takes about 17 pounds uh, per square inch to compress the foam by 50%. And the numbers may seem sort of small, uh, you know, not much weight, but when you factor in how many square inches an area covers, uh, it actually, these can actually absorb and hold a lot of weight. All right, and uh, some of the uh, other pieces of foam uh, that you see me use uh, for different things. Actually, this other foam has come out of uh, some other console cases. And uh, I sort of got lucky a long time ago. I bought a couple of console cases. This was years ago. And I took the foam out of it knowing that I was going to need it for other things. And uh, that's a, for me, that was sort of a cheap way to start off getting a lot of the foam. All right, perfect.